Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, it's been a little while since I've done a video showing some of the new features on the older Flex 3000 that I own. Uh, I'm using the revised software by KE9NS. I'll put some links down at the bottom of the video for you <clears throat> to go to his site. And uh, you can look at his software and see some of his YouTube videos that he uses to explain the software. Anyway, I'm running an older Flex 3000 radio. That's this blue thing right here for those of you that don't know what that is. This is a 100 watts uh, software defined radio. It's plugged into the computer under the desk. And I actually control it with this mouse. There are no knobs or anything else like what you'd see on a radio. It's all controlled from software. But what that does is, uh, since it's software controlled, a developer can go in there and basically give the radio new features that didn't exist in the original uh, radio that was basically sold. So every time that KE9NS comes out with a new version, he basically uh, upgrades my radio and gives me more features than I had before I installed his latest version of the software. So continually being uh, improved. <clears throat> I'm going to try to show you some of these new features on the screen in a minute. But I uh, first want to mention that uh, if you're interested in SDR radio, I think the older flexes Flex radios are probably the best value in SDR around right now. Flex radio has a program where they will buy your Flex 1500, 3000, or 5000 radio. They'll buy it from you. Uh, if you upgrade to their 6000 series radios, once they buy these radios, they bring them in, uh, open them up, check them all out, recalibrate them, make sure everything's good, uh, apply a 90-day warranty to the product, and then put them out for sale on the Flex Radio website. I'll give you a link to where you can see what these are being sold for. The Flex, the last time I <clears throat> looked at it, was in the $800 range. Now, that's a great price right off the bat for a 100-watt radio with an internal tuner, a pretty good internal tuner uh, built into the radio. So $800 and something dollars is, is a pretty good price. And uh, right now, you can uh, buy one of those from Flex then go out there and install the KE9S software. And believe me, you've got a radio with so many features, it's kind of unbelievable. So, with that said, I'm just going to show it to you on the screen. So, let's move over here, and I'll get us positioned uh, on the screen. Let's see if I can bring up that screen here in a minute. There it is. And uh, the other thing I wanted to do was kind of bring my microphone a little bit closer to me. A little bit closer so you can hear me a little better. Uh, hopefully that's a little better. It's kind of in front of me now. <clears throat> All right, so what you're looking at is the Flex 3000 radio screen. And you can see me moving the mouse around right here. We're looking at my computer screen right now, and uh, let's kind of explain this screen to you a little bit uh, so you can uh, get an idea of what's up here. All right, uh, this shows the frequency I'm on, and if I come down here and hit split, 
it lights up the other box, all right? And I would also hit A, B right here, get this back over closer to the 300, all right? And then uh, I could come up here and put in, let's say, uh, uh, let's see what I want to put in. 305, a lot of times split operators will say uh, listening on 14300, up five, up five. So I've got it here. So uh, that way, uh, when I transmit, I'll transmit on 14.305, 305, and I'll be listening on 14.300. So uh, that's what these two dials or uh, number parts of the screen are for. <clears throat> now, uh, let's go down the line here. He has the ability to put two meters on the screen. Here's the first meter. And the second meter is down at the bottom. You can also position this up here below this one. I just prefer it this way. There are a multitude of settings for each one of these meters. All these different settings are available. Okay. Uh, I've chosen to track uh, my output signal versus dB. I want to always be no more than zero dB when I'm transmitting, usually under zero dB, something like minus three, minus five, or something like that. And then down at the bottom, I've got a regular old uh, SWR meter. So I can look at how my signal is going out. If it's being modulated properly, because I'm under 0 dB when I transmit. <clears throat> and then I can also watch my uh, antenna and my SWR, see what it's registering. So that's what those two are. Then here's your band switches. And, you know, you can just click a button and you can see the radio move to that frequency range. So 17 meters or 30 meters, or 40 meters, or wherever. And this is your uh, upper side band, lower side band, your signal modulation, what it's going to be. So it's in lower side band right now. I can move it to upper side band. As you can see, it moved. Go back to lower side band. Dual, what they call dual side band. Don't know what that is. Never have used it. Uh, CW, Morse code lower side band. Notice how narrow the bandwidth is. And upper side band. Then, of course, if I had FM installed, I don't. I could have a transverter installed and I would have FM. Of course, I have AM, and there's an AM signal at 8 kilohertz wide. I can make it 10 kilohertz, 12 kilohertz, or 16 kilohertz, depending on the size of the signal that I'm getting from the AM station. Uh, special, uh, or this is a special AM mode. I've really not found it to be much different than regular AM. I'm sure there's some specs in the manual that talk about it, but when I'm listening to AM shortwave, I'll usually put it right here. Then if we're going to do digital modes, all the digital modes, I'll either be a digital lower band, digital upper band, upper band, upper side band, and... Uh, <clears throat> This is another special mode that I've never actually used. Haven't even read about it in the, in the manual yet. Anyway, this is your band width. And you can also set it manually just by clicking in these boxes here. You can set it manually. So 
real versatile as to bandwidth received or transmitted either way and uh, it's all done visually so if I wanted to receive a wider bandwidth I would just grab the bandwidth and move it okay and I can be as broad as I want to be receiving or as narrow uh, I usually uh, go with the pre-recorded ones that are right here you know so there's a 5K uh, bandwidth, there's a 4, there's a 3, you know, and so forth. Most signals are going to be somewhere, most good signals are going to be somewhere between the 2.9 and the 3.3. Three. Somewhere in there is where they'll be to capture the entire signal. But there are a few people out there transmitting what I call trying to do high fidelity, which is uh, not really possible with a radio, but they try to do it with wider bandwidths up to even 6K bandwidths. So, uh, you know, something like that. Uh, I think that's bad form because you take up uh, much more space uh, than is needed to have uh, good communications. But that's just my opinion. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so this is your bandwidth settings. Down here you have a whole bunch of audio settings. Uh, there's a whole video out there on how to set these up. But really the best way is to get on the radio and start adjusting it. And what I've found is something below halfway, halfway, I think it goes up to 70 as far as mic gain. And I've found in my case, with my voice, uh, about a 28 mic gain is good for me. I normally only turn this on like that. When I'm working DX, it cuts out some of the low end uh, frequencies and uh, kind of helps you penetrate uh, some of the pileups, DX pileups. <clears throat> it kind of raises the tones of your voice a little bit. So, uh, this is a compressor, voice compressor. They call it a compounder. I really don't use that. And I've never used the box or uh, any of the other settings here. And I do have a profile that I've set up one. I've set up one profile. There's a whole bunch of them underneath here that are pre-set up. But the one I always use is uh, one I call Radchip. And uh, <clears throat> that's usually the profile, voice profile that I use. Now, how did I set that up? Well, I went up here under equalization, and it's got built-in equalizers, both for transmission and receiving. Uh, and I've set it to where I like it on receive. Okay, this is the receive equalization curve, and it sounds good to me on my speakers. And then down here, I had some people help me set this uh, by listening to me while I transmitted. So that's how I originally set all this up, and uh, along with these. So uh, <clears throat> that's probably the best way to set it up, set up the audio. But uh, there are some videos out there that will kind of walk you through it. These are some more filter settings, you know, a noise reducer, noise blanker, one and two, automatic notch filter. Uh, but the one that I think is the coolest is this manual notch filter up here. Okay? All right, manual notch filter. We're going to turn it on. Let me see if I can find. Well, let's find this signal. I'm going to turn the sound on so you can hear it. It's a uh, AM station. You get over there and turn it.
All right, it's mostly noise, as you can see. Now watch this noise, uh, this notch filter I'm going to use. All right, so I'm going to click it. There it is right there in green. I'm going to move it over here. It expands the screen. As you can see, I've almost notched out that entire thing. Alright, so uh, it's capable of notching out uh, a noise spike that might be interfering with a signal that you're trying to receive. Let's get rid of that. Okay, pretty neat. Now, uh, what you're looking at up on the screen here, one of the features he's incorporated, KE9NS, is he's got 11,000, let me turn this on. He's got 11,000 shortwave stations already encoded into the software. You can see some of them up here, China Radio International, uh, Sound of Hope, China National Radio, you know, and the only thing is, are we receiving it? Well, we're receiving something here. Let's, uh, let's go to AM and a little bit narrower filter here. And we'll try to get this uh, set on that signal. Right about there. And we'll turn the sound on. It's very distant signal. Very weak. Might be China. Uh, the antenna is pointed due north, so I'm not really pointed in China right now. Sort of kind of, but not really. Alright. So, uh, anyway, he's given us a shortwave listening radio with thousands of radio stations uh, across all of these shortwave bands right here. So you notice I clicked that shortwave listening. Let me go back. I clicked this. I'm back on HF now. I clicked this shortwave listening and it moves to all the shortwave bands. Uh, so if I click one of these you can see there's stations located here. All right, there's one right there. Uh, again, we can turn the sound on. Kind of move over there. And lo and behold, it's some kind of time sink or something. It says Maritime Distress WLO Mobile Radio. I'd have to Google that to uh, see what that was exactly, but there it is. Notice I narrowed the bandwidth. Don't know what that is. All right. Anyway, back on HF again. And uh, turn the sound off. Let me show you some other features. I know you've noticed the background is a world map. That's another one of his features. Uh, it does show the Terminators. And as some of you know, that's... Uh, where you can might be able to receive some long distance propagation by listening for stations along and either side of the terminator, which is the between daylight and dark. All right, so uh, he has that on the screen. He's also got the actual position in the sky of the moon along with the beam heading. Uh, if you were going to do moon bounce, you could read the beam heading uh, right off this screen. He's also got the position of the sun over here, along with some pertinent solar data. 
uh, <clears throat> like the A index or the solar flux, which right now is a 90, which is getting up there. I like to see over 100, but that's 90 right now. So that data is being captured in real time by the software and posted on the screen. The other feature that he added, <clears throat> let me kind of uh, go over here and move this box where you can see it and kind of get it to where it's uh, visible. Uh, anyway, he's got a box here. You can see I've uh, turned on shortwave listening. I'm going to turn it off, okay? And all of those uh, stations went away on the pan adapter. They disappeared. He's got another one that says Spot DX. So if we click this, it will go out to one of these DX clusters and start pulling in uh, anyone that's being reported as being heard on the DX cluster and it will post that. Let me kind of move that. It'll post that along the screen in the exact position on that frequency where that person is located, what frequency. And it will also post up uh, that person's call sign right on the screen. If you right click the call sign, it opens up the QRZ page for that person so you can see who he is and where he's located, he or she is located. So uh, let's see if I can, I'll get that going. It takes a few minutes for it to bring in the DX that it's uh, going to get, but we'll open it up, let it run for a minute. I'm going to check everything. I'm going to check everything so that, uh, you know, we'll get everything that's being reported. He's got some settings down here. For instance, I only want to hear about what's being reported by North American spotters. I'm not interested if this person is being heard in uh, Africa. I want to know if he's, he or she is being heard in America. So uh, he's got some settings like that that you can uh, use. Or you can search for a specific call sign if you're you got a DX expedition out there, and uh, uh, you can put that call sign for that D expedition in there and let this search for that, and uh, uh, it'll show up wherever that person, that D expedition <laughs> happens to be located. You can see it's starting to find uh, DX now. Now, this is a live map. So if I click one of these, it will change this radio to the mode that this person is operating on and put me exactly on their frequency. So if they're operating CW, Morse code, it's going to reconfigure the radio for Morse code and it will put me on their signal. If it's digital, it will do the same thing. If it's voice, it'll do the same thing. It'll configure the radio properly. So uh, I'm going to click one of these and let you see that. So there, it switched to this uh, particular person. Let me move this out of the way so you can see. It's put me right on the frequency for LU7ADN. Now the only question is, can I hear that person? As you can see, right this second, I cannot hear that person. But it put me right on the frequency they were transmitting on. If I right click the call sign, and I'm gonna have to move the screen back over to you, it's on the other screen. If I right click it and I, I'm signed in to QRZ, I'm not signed in there. 
But if I was, it would give me all the information about uh, LU7ADN. So here's his that person's shack. You know, that's what it looks like. There's his antenna. And, you know, that's his uh, QSO map. And he, that person's located in Argentina. So all that is being controlled directly from this screen. This screen is live. It's not just a picture. And you can see it started posting some of those DX calls. Here's that LU7ADN. Here he is right there. Okay? It's posting them on the country in their proper location on the map. So you can actually work directly from this map. I can click this right here. Let's see, did it come up? Well, let me try another one right up here. It might be too close to the bottom. I moved to this person, okay, right here. See, I moved to him. Let's see if I can move over here now. It doesn't like this Australian guy for some reason. Does not like him. Ha! Ah, there we go. It got it that time. There's... Uh, there's VK5 uh, LC. He is transmitting in on, uh, it looks like, uh, FT8 right now. He's coming in on digital. <clears throat> Probably could make a contact with that person. So this screen, my whole point of that is this screen is live. As you see, it's also got a waterfall. That's another one of his features is that Two-thirds is pan adapter, and one-third is uh, waterfall. And that all happens as you press the track button. The screen comes up, the sun comes up, all that comes up. If I click it again, it'll all go away. Watch. There. It's gone. Okay? Now, what I wanted to show you was another feature of the software. He has incorporated the Voice of America algorithm that they used to, they may still use it, I don't know. But uh, within this is incorporated the algorithm they use to determine propagation for either an omnidirectional antenna or a beam antenna. In other words, uh, you can put some values in for your antenna, and then by clicking, let me show it to you right here, by clicking VOA cap, like that, it will put, and you got to be on track while you're doing that, There you go. And here is the, for a omnidirectional antenna, here's a contour map showing at this time on 40 meters where your signal would be heard on a map. Okay, and the orange ones are getting kind of weak and anything outside the orange, they wouldn't hear you at all. And the, obviously the yellows and the greens in here are even better. Further out you go, different colors, the weaker you are. And uh, so he's got a down and dirty propagation visually determined on the screen uh, at any point in time you can see what propagation is doing using the Voice of America little uh, algorithm. So that's another one of KE9NS's um, uh, 
additions to power SDR software, which runs this radio. So now you can see all the DX spots uh, it's found. And simply by clicking one of these, I move to the frequency for that call sign. So we've moved to uh, EW4CD. And again, if I hold down the control key and click, uh, click this, And I'm having trouble with my little mouse. I don't know if my battery's dying or what's going on. Something's going on. I don't know what it is. But anyway, let me give it one more try. I'll give up. And I uh, wonder if it popped it up. Yes, it did. It's behind all this other stuff. That's why I couldn't see it. So here's EW4CD, and uh, uh, he's located in Belarus. So simply by clicking one of these, uh, you go to the proper frequency for that DX contact, and your radio is all set up and ready to go. Then it's only a question do you have a signal for that person? Okay? Do you have a signal? Or can you hear a signal? Uh, anyway, uh, more stuff that he's added. He's added a timer down here. A uh, 10 minute timer. So it will pop up a little thing on, on this screen and tell you it's, it's time to ID. Uh, ham radio operators have to ID every 10 minutes. Uh, it will also, can also be set up to automatically generate your call sign in Morse code and transmit it every 10 minutes automatically, if you like. Uh, another one of the features is he's added this CPU percentage and temperature and volts uh, on the screen so that you can see what your CPU is doing. Uh, kind of a little handy feature. Uh, he's also installed uh, several different methods of tuning. Uh, intermittent tuning, uh, a very fast sequence of uh, modulation. Uh, it's very handy to have. If you have a tube amp amplifier, as it doesn't uh, tax the tubes, when you modulate it quickly and release. So that's all built into the software now. Uh, <clears throat> of course, there's some monitor modes that are built in, different monitor modes, and different methods of recording what is being heard. Several different methods of doing that. And several different methods of recording uh, nets or special frequencies that you want to save in memory and return to them at some later time or day. You can do all that from the screen and uh, then go back to that frequency tomorrow or next week or next year or whatever. And he does have timers uh, which uh, will turn on the radio at that time and turn the radio to that frequency and record for, I think it's up to 30 minutes of whatever it hears. It'll do that all automatically. So, he's got some really ambitious uh, improvements to the software that some of which don't exist in any other radio other than the 3,000, 1,500, and 5,000 because flex radios, because they are running 
his revised software. They don't exist in the brand new 6000 series. Of course, it can do some things that this radio can't do, but uh, as far as these features that I've named, uh, many of these uh, cannot be done on the 6000 without other pieces of software. You can do every one of these if you have multiple software pieces of software running along with this uh, screen right here. But he's incorporated all these features directly into the radio software. So let me kind of get you uh, change the camera back over here like this. I guess that's good enough. I guess we'll find out in a minute. Let me close this. Let me get you back over on my smiling face over here. Yeah. And this video has gone long enough. I hope I gave you a pretty good idea of some of the latest features uh, with his software. There are so many that he actually has a manual on his website that you can download and read about all the features. Pages and pages of new features. I did not touch on all of them. So with that said, as I usually do, hope to help you. If you're looking for a radio, I can certainly recommend this old, old being a few years old, Flex 3000 to you, used from Flex Radio. Go out there to Flex Radio, look it up. It's a pretty good radio. Don't have to have a tuner. Don't have to have a signal link to do digital. It does all of that all by itself. So basically, you're ready to go once you got it rigged up. With that said, I wish y'all clear skies in 73 and keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Y'all be good. See y'all later. I'm going to go smoke a cigar and drink some uh, single malt scotch. Be back later.